Algeria 2022 is somewhat different thanks to the profound political, social, economic and cultural changes being experienced. The country which was delivered from a dangerous predatory oligarchy which intervened in the affairs of the state is today witnessing major economic and political developments. In a very short period of time, the reformist president of the Republic, Mr. Abdelmajid Taboon, put Algeria in the camp of emerging democracies. Together, in this program, we will shed light on President Taboon's 54 commitments and how they are being implemented on the ground and how the country is evolving at a brisk pace since December 19, 2019, the date of investiture of President Taboon. This is All24 News Special. Hello there and welcome to the program. Thanks to the implementation on the ground of President Taboon's 54 commitments, the country is indeed evolving at a brisk pace and along Algeria is transforming visibly into a modern country which is industrializing. New legitimate institutions are emerging away from lobbies and forces of inertia. The solidity of the new institutions, the socio-economic emergence, the resurgence of Algerian diplomacy and the attachment of Algerians to their president, as well as the pride they derive from the policy pursued by President Taboon, is something quite tangible. Along with today's distinguished guest, we will scrutinize the internal affairs, the return to, dip to diplomacy, I'm saying, and the economic achievements chapter by chapter in today's program. And before we bring in our guests, here is a report by our own Osama Ayadi in which he brings to the limelight how Algeria has succeeded over the past three years in carrying out a pioneering democratic and development experience based on a harmonious political transition in accordance with constitutional principles, the popular will, an economic recovery based on the development of the national capacities and the release of the initiatives and energies of the youth. Let's follow the report. Three years in office were enough for the Algerian president Abdelmajid Taboun to set new features for the Algerian Republic. A series of new reforms at all the levels was the number one concern of the Algerian president. The wise governance, wide vision and deep concern about taking the Algerian level of life to a different stage led to significant development and radical transformations. Algeria has seen substantial changes reflected in the restoration of the state's authority, establishment of a new constitution worthy of big democracies, strengthening a social policy that protects the most vulnerable classes, in addition to the digital transformation. In a very short time, President Taboon brought Algeria into the camp of emerging democracies, and the country is evolving at a rapid pace through the implementation of President Taboon's 54 commitments. With regard to the program dedicated to grey zones, Algerians have seen commitments to continue implementation of the president's program. The leadership of the president revealed the aim of reducing the differences and signs of disparity between regions in the field of development and ending isolation from remote areas by continuing to generalize their connection to various networks. In a further step to better the situation of the Algerian youth, Algeria has seen for the first time in history the implementation of unemployment benefits for young adults. The president's program also made the substantial leap in easing the financial status of citizens with low wages, and this was concreted by the elimination of taxes for those not exceeding 30,000 dinars. Furthermore, people have benefited from salary increases for employees, retirees, and even unemployed young adults. Basic foodstuffs were not ignored during these three years of hard work, as the crisis which was dominant three years ago is now seeing a notable ease due to the firm policy to guarantee Algerians food security. Algeria is visibly transforming into a modern industrializing country with new legitimate institutions. President Taboon, who is determined to guarantee all freedoms and make Algeria a democracy, chose direct contact with the people through his formal meetings with the media and his tweets. 
the solidity of the new institutions, the socio-economic emergence, the attachment of Algerians to their president are what makes the new roadmap for the new Algeria. Eager to anticipate tomorrow's big challenges, President Taboon has never ceased to surprise the Algerian population and apparently the year 2023 will be full of good surprises. All right, let's bring in our guest. Joining me live via Skype is Dr. Hamoud Salhi, Associate Dean Professor of International Education at California University. We also have Mr. Badis Khnisa, a political and foreign affairs analyst from Paris. And from Italy, we're joined by Mr. Mark Lowe, or Mark William Lowe, geopolitical analyst, experts on international relations. And from Algeria is Mahfoud Ali uh, Zoui, political analyst and a lecturer at Galma University. And here in studio, we are accompanied by Mr. Shuaib Butamin, oil and gas advisor and CEO of Rana Drill. Thank you, gentlemen, all for accepting to be much. with us. And let's delve into discussion directly. First, let me commence with you, Dr. Hamoud Salhi. President Taboon delivered in his first speech after his swearing in the main axis of his strategy to deliver Algeria, the objective of which, he said, is to restore the people's confidence in their state and ensure their mobilization in order to guarantee Algeria's stability and its future all the while restoring the authority of the state. When do you think, or where do you think we're at here? I mean, what have we reached so far, Dr. Hamoud Salhi? And do Algerians now trust their state after what happened with the oligarchs who infiltrated the state? Thank you very much, Karim. And uh, it's a pleasure being with your guests. And uh, hello to my friend, Shaib. I think uh, the president, uh, in his uh, appearance uh, before the magistrate, uh, made a very, very good point uh, that the states gain its confidence uh, based on its laws and how people react uh, to uh, its performance. On the laws, uh, you mentioned about uh, the emergence uh, of uh, uh, Algeria as a dominant player in, in global politics. The uh, idea of establishing uh, uh, commercial courts, for example, uh, to address uh, the need of the people is uh, something uh, that is connected uh, with uh, good governance and would certainly gain uh, the confidence uh, of the people. Now, let's talk about the numbers. Uh, when you look at the, the reports uh, that the World Bank and IMF uh, uh, released uh, the last month, mm -hmm. it noted that the Algerians have, uh, are growing uh, at a fastest uh, grow level, uh, expecting uh, to see uh, a growth of 4.7% this year and then 2.7% 2, uh, 2 next year. This places Algeria, according to the IMF and the World Bank, as the fastest growing, uh, as the top uh, fastest growing in, in the Maghreb. And it's also in uh, the region of, of the Mediterranean, which includes Italy and France. And projection also are that Algeria will be the fast growing uh, uh, in terms of human indexes mm -hmm. and, and disease in, in next year. You look at also other areas in, in, in Africa where Algeria is seen as a, as a dominant uh, uh, and, and a very important economy. Mm -hmm. And it is also ranked among the top in the country. A very, very important statistics when you look at about emerging trends. Uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, the business school uh, uh, high school, uh, uh, business school, is ranked top, t among the top 10th in, in the country. Mm -hmm. Now, this aside, uh, also you look at uh, the, the, the plan uh, to stay away from the, the uh, oil sector mm -hmm. and to develop the mineral uh, structure. The plan is for Algeria to achieve uh, $7 billion exports on non uh, on commodities other than, uh, than oil. Mm -hmm. The agreement or the partnership that Algeria has uh, with the United States, in particular with the, the Prime Minister visit to the United States, along with the uh, to attend the Africa-U.S. Uh, summit, underscored 
the importance of the changes in laws in, of investment in Algeria, but also when you look at the strategic partnership that Algeria has built uh, with mm -hmm. the United States, it's based on developing the key sectors mm -hmm. and relying on advanced technology, particularly in areas of agriculture. So yes, uh, uh, Karim, the, mm -hmm. the, we are on the, on the right path. I think we need to go to work. Very nice indeed. And uh, Dr. Benisa Khnisa, if we speak of restoring the authority of the state, the institutional construction must be complete, in parallel, that is, with the moralization of public life, the fight against all forms of corruption, and the consecration of independence uh, of justice, let's say. Do you see that Algeria has indeed crossed with its institution uh, and its constitutional authorities a step revealing the contours, to say the least, of a new Algeria confident in the future, especially amidst the war against all those who have damaged the state's institutions and looted public money? Well, if you allow me, first of all, we, we need, to, before to moving forward, maybe to remind the context where uh, and when uh, the president has been elected previously with a democracy, uh, I would say, mechanism and tools. Mm -hmm. This is the first thing. So, and after, of course, the, he took over, uh, uh, I would say, a collapsed economy, uh, socially, uh, politically, so uh, too many crises, uh, mm -hmm. I, I mean. So the president uh, with a new wave presidency, if I can say that, with the new approach, took over the country with all these constraints, with mm -hmm. all these major problems. And uh, in pile of that, of course, he made what I call made the, the priority uh, actions, like, as you said just previously in your uh, topic, the cleanup, m maybe mm -hmm. to clear the, 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 the path in mm -hmm. order to make it reliable and efficient uh, path uh, to moving forward to the new Algeria. The new Algeria, of course, today, uh, we cannot deny, uh, and it's easily even to be checked on a daily basis by the citizens, by the people, mm -hmm. that we are crossing and reaching the new phase, a new event of the new Algeria in his history. So mm -hmm. I think that, of course, the new constitution uh, may be giving more voices and, more, uh, I mean, more uh, representation to the people, to the, all the, the, the levels of the people, mm -hmm. uh, knowing also that he, he has been elected also in order to maybe satisfy some expectations, strong expectations. He took over as a legacy decades and decades of, of failures. So mm -hmm. we need really to remind that in order to also, uh, objectively recognize that he achieved uh, an amazing and awesome challenges, and above that, in a short period and short time, mm -hmm. this is really we need to highlight it. Of course, the path is still very long, but I think that uh, the, the the also he he may make it clear and he make it also uh, I, I would say faster in mm -hmm. the mechanism, as you said. He also founded a lot of new structures, brand uh, new structures like the the the, uh, the National Observatory uh, of the Civil Society, even mm -hmm. the high, high Council of the Youth, in order Very to nice. allow and enable all the levels of the the, the, the population and the, the civil society to take part in this uh, uh, roadmap in, and this challenge and fulfill achieve this challenge jointly with a common mm -hmm. and hard work. Understood. Thank you so much. And uh, Professor Mohammed Ali Zoui, the thorny process of rebuilding is being carried out in a difficult geopolitical and economic situation. The President of the Republic prepared the ground by launching wide consultations with all political, economic and social partners, as uh, Dr. Bediz Khnisa just said, uh, with a view to achieving, that is, a consensus around the important national issues and to form a national front to meet the challenges facing Algeria. To do this, the President of the Republic installed the members of the High Council for Youth and the High Council for Energy, in addition to the General Inspectorate of the Presidency of the Republic. My question is, how important is this to control the work of officials and ensure the implementation of government decisions and the application of the laws of the Republic? And how does the installation of these uh, constitutional bodies help in restoring the confidence of the people in preserving their rights and enshrining public freedoms. Can we say that Algeria actually succeeded in the construction of a solid institutional base for the promotion of fundamental rights and public freedoms through these reforms? Ali Zoui? Thank you so much. Uh, this is an uh, indeed a very important question and very interesting question. Thank you so much for having me first. It's always my pleasure, it's a pleasure. to be uh, among you. 
Uh, well, uh, we should, I think, recall the, the situation and the overall political climate when President Boon uh, took office back in December uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. He took office amidst uh, a turbulent political uh, climate where uh, the, all the in, uh, political institutions of the nation were, were ailing and uh, the economy was devastated. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the re rebuilding the state institutions and the democratic institutions you are talking about mm -hmm. was the, 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 the main challenge for President Boon. And uh, partly because uh, I think also that uh, the, the main, uh, he was aware that the main challenge is to uh, bridge the gap of trust between the establishment and the people. And these uh, in constitutional uh, institutions were uh, very important and necessary uh, in this direction. I mean, in the direction of regaining the trust uh, of uh, the, the Algerian people. So the first priority was to rebuild uh, the ailing uh, political institutions of the country and mm -hmm. uh, a, a set of new constitu constitutional institutions to help uh, to help the, the 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 team of the presidency team to uh, to put the first uh, steps in uh, building the new Algeria based mm -hmm. on the 54 commitments set by uh, the, the, uh, the, the new president of the Republic, Mr. Abdelmajid Tabun. And I, uh, here it is also important uh, to, uh, to, to say that uh, what the, 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 the new tradition established by uh, Mr. Tabun is very important. Now, mm -hmm. if we want to uh, assess the development and the progress made in restoring democracy, it uh, becomes very easy because we have a reference. I mean, he set for himself some targets, a clear policy agenda detailed in 54 uh, electoral uh, ple pledges. So uh, it, it, he, he makes it easier for political analysts, for the general public, and mm -hmm. for uh, his presidential team uh, to assess uh, the ups and downs and to assess the uh, development made uh, so far. I think that serious steps have been made in this direction mm -hmm. and uh, the better is to come, inshallah. Very nice. And just to put uh, some light or shed some light on the important points that uh, in the program of the President of the Republic, we see here that citizens are at the center of priorities of the new Algeria. The protection of their purchasing power is a constant battle. President Taboon promised that the year 2023 will be accompanied by new measures for the benefit of ordinary citizens who remain, he said, and I quote, the priority and central concern of the state, end quote. Here, we can't help but bring into the limelight the budget bill of 2023 whose provisions aim at improve or improving the purchasing power of the citizen maintaining the subsidy of mass consumption products and increase in wages without the introduction of new taxes. President Taboon also ordered to prepare the implementing tax or texts relating to the increase in salaries, retirement pensions and unemployment benefit to proceed with the payment of increases from January 2023. The President of the Republic had already ordered the exemption of all employees whose income does not exceed 30,000 dinars from the global income tax known as ERG, and the reduction of the ERG for the benefit of more than 9 million citizens. Overall, the annual budget allocated to social transfers, direct and indirect, exceeded 5,000 billion dinars, not to mention the practical provisions in the fight against any form of speculation which has overwhelmed the citizen, have made it impossible or have made it possible for him to rectify the situation after the stabilization of supply operations and the availability of products. And here, let me bring Mr. Shaib Boutamin for the question. How is the Algerian government going to manage funding all this substantial increase? I mean, we're speaking about uh, increase in wages for uh, retirees and for the, those who are working, for those uh, who, have, uh, who are uh, idle, let's say, and jobless. The President of the Republic introduced this uh, allocation or this allowance for them. Uh, how do you think that Algeria is going to be 
able to fund all this? Is it uh, through the increase in uh, oil and gas, uh, let's say, budget? Or, and say, for example, tomorrow we are not going to have the, uh, the same, let's say, uh, prices for barrel. Is Algeria going to uh, stick to that increases? And how are we going to pull this off, seeing the difficult economic situation the, the whole world is going through, Mr. Shaibot? I mean. Okay, first of mm -hmm. all, good afternoon, uh, Karim, and uh, good afternoon, all Thank the guests. First of all, also I want to say that the, 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 the trade balance for Algeria for mm -hmm. 2022 will, be, uh, will end up, will shift into $17 billion mm -hmm. as a nexus, a surplus compared to 2021. Uh, we have to highlight something. By, by the end of 2022, Algeria will record uh, $56 billion, mm -hmm. an increase of uh, like $17 billion. We have to talk about uh, the, the hydrocarbon uh, incomes, revenues, mm -hmm. but we need also to mention the non-hydrocarbon revenues in mm -hmm. income. Algeria yes. is, is, is making a very good progress. In 2021, we had $4.2 billion uh, uh, in, uh, revenue from non-hydrocarbons. Mm -hmm. This year, we will record more than $7 billion. Mm -hmm. This is an increase of more than 60%. This is the major uh, thing, the major achievements, I think, for this president, for new Algerian governments, mm -hmm. that we are working in parallel. Yes, we are a little bit lucky, oil prices and, and mm -hmm. gas are, are increasing, mm -hmm. but in parallel, on the other hand, we are making a lot of efforts. Algeria mm -hmm. now is a big, big workshop. Mm -hmm. I, let me remember you that we have Algeria launched the project of the iron mine in Gharj Bilat in Tindouf, mm -hmm. by 2027, will increase the Algerian production of iron to uh, 40, uh, 40 million uh, tons per year. Mm -hmm. Algeria also is, is in high discussion, in advanced discussion with the African countries, mm -hmm. Niger, Nigeria, to, uh, to extend the, the, the gas pipe project from Nigeria to, mm -hmm. to Europe through, through Algeria. We have also, uh, we need also to mention that there is a route also is going to, to Mauritania, to Nouakchott, to extend the Algerian, the African uh, dimension of Algeria. So uh, a lot of projects are taking place. Uh, let me highlight that a few days ago, the pre Algerian president, Abdel Majid Taboun, has said that Algeria, by, by uh, April 2022, Algeria will produce the table oil 100%. Mm -hmm. This is a great progress for the Algerian production. And we have to highlight this. We have to mention the positive and the good things we mm -hmm. achieved. And, 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 and this is, is very important. So uh, I think that the income or the revenue we are getting from oil and gas we can exploit them for many sectors mm -hmm. and for so social, for to, to, to invest or uh, let me to finance uh, the, the all the money sectors in, mm -hmm. in the country. But uh, I, I wanted to shed the light on, on, on the efforts have been really done on non-hydrocarbon. Uh, so uh, mm -hmm. I think that uh, Algeria in, in by 22, 23, 24 has mm -hmm. very big projects. Uh, in parallel in, in, in oil and gas. And the president also mentioned a few days ago that Algerians' plan is to increase the export capacity of natural gas to 100 billion cubic meters per year. This mm -hmm. is a very great, uh, great uh, achievement if we get it. And you know, it, it takes a little bit more mm -hmm. time. It's a little ambitious. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it takes more time. Mm -hmm. But I think this is a very good news for, for Algeria, that we have uh, the vision mm -hmm. is we are going to invest. The investment is not in oil, in oil and gas, but it's, it's, uh, we see now a touchable results mm -hmm. and touchable efforts mm -hmm. in the ground. Very nice indeed. Okay. And then we move on to Algerian diplomacy that has moved from representation to influence, an approach advocated by the President of the Republic in favor of diplomatic action, serving first and foremost the supreme interest of Algeria, while working to the establishment of strategic partnerships. Let's follow the highlights of the strong comeback of Algerian diplomacy in international and regional forums with Mariam Zian up next. Thank you, Karim, and welcome, dear viewers. Algeria marked its strong return to the international scene, faithful to the principles of the 1st November 1954, based on support for just causes and the right of peoples for self-determination and non-interference. 
Algerian diplomacy has been working for decades for the restoration of peace and stability in countries worldwide. To begin with, on the diplomatic level, Algeria has succeeded in reconciling the Palestinian ranks and thus continues its support to, to, the, Palestinians, to the Palestinian people to respond to their call and remain at their side until the achievement of their legitimate rights to the establishment of an independent Palestinian state with Al-Quds as the capital and the return of Palestinian refugees to their lands. Next, Algeria successfully organized the Arab summit in Algiers on November the 1st and the 2nd, which stood out for its desire to resolve misunderstandings and bring the Arab nation together. Political analysts and Arab experts were unanimous in affirming the success of the Arab summit in bringing the Arab ranks together and praised the wise leadership and diplomacy of Algeria which helped to overcome the differences and reach a consensus that led to the Algiers Declaration. And since December 2019, Algerian diplomacy has also returned to basics with a strong return to the African scene. Algeria, the pivotal country, has continued to be an exporter of peace and stability in the Sahel Saharan area and on the rest of the African continent. Under the presidency of the uh, under the president uh, under the presidency of Al-Majid Taboun, Algeria finally hosted many inter-Libyan talks as part of its ongoing efforts to resolve the Libyan crisis. In the Malian case, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, paid tribute to Algeria as a leader of international mediation for its commitment to peace in Mali without forgetting the country's efforts to accelerate the implementation of the peace and, Re and reconciliation agreement resulting from the Algiers process. And regarding Western Sahara, it continues to recall that the only just and lasting solution to this conflict is one that would allow the Sahrawi people to freely exercise their rights to self-determination in accordance with the UN Resolution 1514. Last but not least, Algeria was elected to the U UN Human Rights Council for a two-year term from 2023 to 2025, following a vote at the General Assembly in New York. Algeria's accession to the UN Human Rights Council will not only enable it to work for the promotion and protection of human rights throughout the world, but also to confirm its place in the concert of nations and will confirm its candidacy for a seat as a non-permanent member of the UN Security Council from 2024 to 2025, the elections of which will be held in June 2023. The new Algeria is no longer that of yesterday. Our country, under the leadership of the president, Abdelmajid Taboun, is advancing steadily towards economic development and influence both at the political and diplomatic levels. That's it for me. Back to you, Karim. Back to you, Dr. Hamoud Salhi. How has Algerian diplomacy metamorphosed, according to you, in the light of the Algiers Declaration on the reunification of uh, Palestinian ranks, as well as the success of the Arab summit? So we, we have to, to unpack uh, the Algerian move uh, in, in different uh, uh, areas, on the three main areas, which are uh, security, economic partnership, uh, and diplomatic uh, political activism. And this, these are all connected. Uh, and and mm -hmm. if you remember, if we start with the, uh, with, with the idea of order or security of the region, Algerian re uh, role evolved uh, 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 along these three years. It mm -hmm. began by becoming active in the Libyan crisis, mm -hmm. and Algeria soon became a major player uh, in that uh, in resolving that conflict and uh, signing agreements uh, for economic development with, with, with the Libyan government, uh, staying with the, leg the international legitimacy uh, of, uh, of, of Libya, and more than anything else, not taken side in the uh, in, in the conflict by presenting itself as a, a, a country that seeks uh, the benefits of Libya, the Libyan people and to let the Libyan decide what, what they do. That mm. soon translated also uh, to play a major role in regional security, the threat that the Israelis uh, and the normalization that, that our neighbors signed with Israel proved mm -hmm. to be very serious threat. And there, Algeria also played an instrumental role 
in designing a security regional uh, uh, a strategy uh, that preempted, number one, from escalating the situation into a war uh, with the country. And we, we should notice that Algeria is under threat in, the, in, the, in that area. Mm -hmm. And more than anything else, uh, playing a constructive role in managing uh, uh, the conflict so it doesn't impact, uh, the, it doesn't become a, a severe threat that forced Algeria to, uh, to retaliate uh, with force. Mm -hmm. and then in the long picture, in that same security segment, you have several initiatives to working with the African leaders, what we've seen in the Sahel, what we've seen in Algeria partnership with, I mean, a relationship with Russia, with China. All of this is designed to give Algeria an edge and to benefit uh, from uh, what is happening uh, mm -hmm. uh, in in changes in the international order as a result of the Ukrainian crisis. Mm -hmm. On the economic side, we saw also a very active movement. Uh, mm -hmm. And what is interesting about the Algerian move is that it, link, it is linked to the bigger strategic or the grand strategy of Algeria, mm -hmm. that our partnership are number one signed for long term, uh, uh, for long terms. This is the case with Italy, for example, and more than anything else are designed to bring investors of that country and right. benefit uh, and, and design or create conditions for mutual ben benefit. Mm -hmm. And we can add, uh, just to be brief, uh, on the political front, particularly in the international system, with Algeria's role in leading now uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, some of, of the core issues of the Arab world, the mm -hmm. support that Algeria lended to the Palestinian cause by opting a very, very strategic move uh, before the Arab summit, it was clear to the Algerian that in order for the Palestinians to succeed internationally, they need mm -hmm. a help, and the second thing, they need to put their, uh, their their house in order. We see that we saw that in the meeting that was uh, mm -hmm. held in Algeria of all factions uh, of the Palestinian faction, and later on we saw it in the meetings and the result of the community of Algiers, in which underscored the importance of following up with decision, the right. creation of the Arab Palestinian Committee, uh, to see to it that decision are or promises are fulfilled. Failed, and mm -hmm. more than anything else, to lend or okay. to become a source of resolving the internal uh, 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 faction that exists uh, within the Arab world and within the, the Palestinian groups. Perfect. Let me bring in uh, Dr. Bediz Khnisa. How do you read the strong comeback of Algeria on the international scene? And how important is it in light of the major political changes the world is witnessing, Dr. Bediz Khnisa? I think that first we need to remind also that the, 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 most of the time in the foreign affairs, the, the, the internal politic, I would say, is the extension of, mm -hmm. the, the, of the political affairs. Uh, as much as you are strong in your uh, internal politic, and as you said previously, and rightly said, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the rebuilding the bridges of trust with the, with the citizens mm -hmm. means that we make strength and, and uh, stronger the, 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 what we call the internal front. Mm -hmm. So this means also that by extension, also you got a diploma, stronger diplomacy, and this is what we are witnessing actually. Uh, mm -hmm. Algeria, uh, under you know uh, the president Abdel Majid Tebboune management, and uh, uh, you know he's leading a lot of uh, and achieving uh, successfully a lot of major milestones uh, in, in in short time. Again, mm -hmm. we are talking about uh, outcome of three years only. Uh, so, the, of course, we are also in line with the the, the the Algerian diplomacy legacy since you know years and years since uh, the, the the war uh, revolution war. So, and at the same time also. We are witnessing something brand new. So mm -hmm. actually, we are facing and living some new concept between mm -hmm. bracket of the diplomacy. Let's remind the economic diplomacy as new concept. Let's remind as well the sports, uh, the mm -hmm. diplomacy uh, through the, the, the last event in, in Oran of the Mediterranean uh, Games. Uh, also, so civil society diplomacy mm -hmm. by playing with uh, using the, 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 the internal front of the civil society as partnership, strategic partnership, according to the uh, present words. So I think that we are achieving uh, successfully, uh, once again, the, the, a new mm -hmm. page, historic page of the, the, the histor Algeria history. But uh, mm -hmm. nevertheless, we need also to remind that uh, we can not have a doubt today that Algeria is targeted uh, 
several several entities like a Zionist entity and mm -hmm. some uh, other partners are trying to undermine the, the, the security of Algeria mm -hmm. uh, directly and indirectly in the in the region. But Quite Algeria clear. at the same time. Algeria at the same time, just quickly, mm -hmm. Algeria at the same time, he's a pivot, he's a strategic partnership uh, through a lot of uh, events, a lot of, as I said, the summit, Arab summit mm -hmm. uh, recently, also maybe by reunifying the, 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 the Palestinian factions, also mm -hmm. by some steps always su su sustains all the, the, the people uh, needs and, need, and people expect expectations to, to have to enable them to have a chance to mm -hmm. enjoy sustainable in, in uh, development all around the world and also also to be partnership and decision maker part of mm -hmm. the decision maker in the or around the world so I we can say uh, I mean um, uh, really uh, today that Algeria under president uh, Abdel Majid Tabun is a, a, a really major player in mm -hmm. this, uh, I mean, uh, situation, really, very critical situation. Understood. And the Professor Mahfoud Ali uh, Zoui, the diplomatic relations which were complex with certain countries like France are now clear, being based on the principles of November 1st declaration. How do you read the President's commitment to the memory file, the creation of a committee of historians to study the file? We can also cite the recovery of the skulls of the martyrs and the launch of a channel dedicated to the memory or the national memory, the presidential decree to make the day of May the 8th the national day of memory the observation of a minute of silence on October 17th of each year, the memory of the martyrs uh, of the massacres of October 17th, 1961 in Paris, among other things. Thank you so much. Uh, in fact, the new focus of President Abdelmajid Tebboune on, on the memory file mm -hmm. is not just a slogan as we used to, uh, to witness in the during the previous years. Now, mm -hmm. it's materialized into policy, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, we made it uh, our policy agenda clear, for example, as regards to the relations with France, we can only establish uh, a, a partnership of equals based on uh, settlement of the memory file and the recognition by France of its uh, brutal, uh, brutal legacy, uh, colonial uh, legacy. So mm -hmm. the memory file relates to the Algerian identity. We build the pride of the new generation through this memory file. Mm -hmm. But the memory file also has implications for foreign policy and it has a tangible implication for example that is a retreat in foreign trade with france mm -hmm. uh, towards diversifying uh, european uh, partners now we have good relations with italy with uh, mm -hmm. with, with germany and uh, I think that the French establishment uh, mm -hmm. received uh, the, the, the message in a very clear way. Uh, the memory file uh, mm -hmm. should be, uh, I mean, should be settled before any serious relationship based on equal, uh, equality between the two countries can be established from mm -hmm. now uh, on. So, as you mentioned, uh, uh, there are many demonstrations of the new focus of President Tebboune on the memory file. This is manifested in his speeches in establishing a day of remembrance or mm -hmm. a memory uh, day on opening a public channel about uh, memory and uh, on uh, the re-establishment of our relationship with uh, the former colony France on a new basis mm -hmm. uh, and uh, by making in this clear for the, uh, the, the, the the French part. Very nice. And uh, you spoke earlier about having uh, different uh, partners. And here, let me bring in uh, Mr. Mark Lowe uh, from Italy, who can tell us uh, what are Europe's hopes and expectations for Algeria. How important is it for Europe and the Western world in general, Mr. Mark Lowe, to have a strong and stable Algeria? Well, let me begin first of all, by saying that I am um, very, very impressed with the progress that has been made over the past three years. And we also have to remember that President Taboon inherited an Algeria that was in a very bad situation from many different points of view. We then had the problem of the pandemic, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. That did not help. That slowed things down. So we are certainly um, not, in my opinion, not in a new Algeria, mm -hmm. but in a new chapter in Algeria's history. Mm -hmm. Now, as regards Europe, as regards how Algeria is perceived mm -hmm. uh, from a European point of view, uh, we can say that there is a lot of attention and a lot of hope. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. in the news. Most recently, uh, the deal with, with Italy. And um, uh, this has an impact on Germany. Mm-hmm. Increased gas supplies will flow through Italy. Italy will be a hub. Some of this gas will go up to Germany and substitute mm-hmm. the gas that it can no longer import from Russia. Mm-hmm. So that this is all absolutely fine, but it is um, not exactly a partnership. It's an agreement that was mm-hmm. based upon requirement. Mm-hmm. So Europe's requirement to access alternative, alternatives to Russian gas supplies and Algeria's requirement to export more and bring in more foreign revenue through an increase in gas supplies. That is very, very dangerous. Mm -hmm. That's very, very dangerous if Mm -hmm. this additional income is not used to diversify the economy. Um, 95%, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think about 95% of Algeria's exports and somewhere Mm -hmm. in the region of over 50% of the value of its exports is from hydrocarbons. So we've discussed this during the uh, interventions of the speakers earlier on. We all recognize that it's very, very important to use Mm. this additional revenue to diversify the economy. It's fundamental that Algeria is not a supplier of commodities or raw materials, Mm -hmm. but that Algeria encourages the development of manufacturing processes. Mm. Algeria encourages means via which to create an added value to some mm-hmm. of the raw materials in the country. So mm-hmm. th- this is something that Europe will be looking at very, very closely. Mm-hmm. For what reason? Because a stronger and a more diversified economy mm-hmm. is very, very positive. To and everybody. Mr. Mark Lowe, uh, how do you see Algeria's role in the region? And uh, what do you think the, the future might hold? Right. Well, first and foremost, the president is... Um, taking forward, pushing forward a very, very difficult balancing act in terms of international relations. Mm -hmm. On the one hand, stronger ties with Europe, Mm -hmm. where, I'll open and close a parenthesis, um, we would be making an enormous mistake if we were to maintain these relationships in terms of supply and and demand, Mm -hmm. client and supplier. A massive effort needs to be made to partner Mm -hmm. with private companies in Europe. There are benefits, very tangible, very, very obvious benefits for all parties involved. So we need to focus on a partnership, not a relation based on the supply of of, of products, especially when the supply has been increased due to an an emergency. Mm -hmm. Now, um, that said, the balancing act in terms of international relations is very, very difficult because mm-hmm. uh, it's very important to consolidate relationships with Europe. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, we've seen you know, only very recently um, an absolutely perfect alignment of interests in Libya, a perfect alignment mm-hmm. with Turkish ambitions in, in Libya. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm not wrong, the president, this has as yet to be confirmed, but the president Mm -hmm. should be visiting Moscow very, very soon Mm -hmm. to sign a series of strategic agreements, Mm -hmm. many of which will be defense sector agreements. Now, there's absolutely nothing new in that because um, first the Soviet Union, after that Russia, Mm -hmm. has always been uh, Algeria's principal defense partner. It's a historic relationship, um, and it goes back to to support for Algeria's independence. Absolutely nothing abnormal there, there. Mm-hmm. So we, we, we see all, all of this um, through the lens of European interests. And what do we see looking at it this way? We mm-hmm. see an Algeria that we have to monitor very, very carefully. Now, mm-hmm. expectations are very high. This is the good news. Mm-hmm. Expectations are high because there is belief in Algeria's capability under the president's guidance mm-hmm. to ra- radically Mm -hmm. change the economy and therefore radically change the the welfare and the lifestyle of the population, which is absolutely fundamental. Mm -hmm. If we don't have popular support, we we cannot govern. Understood. Understood. And uh, Dr. Hamoud Salhi, how do you find Mark Lowe's uh, comments? And again, how important is it for neighboring countries such as Libya, Tunisia, Mali and the Sahel region in general to have a strong and stable Algeria? Uh, very important, uh, and Mark is correct in mm-hmm. underscoring uh, uh, the role uh, and uh, that Algeria uh, plays, and also uh, the potential uh, to mm-hmm. develop uh, 
I think what's significant about the Algerian experience and relationship with others is when you follow it all these years, uh, there is always uh, that principled uh, uh, governing uh, uh, measure uh, that Algeria holds, number one, to itself, and mm -hmm. second, to the entire community, which is uh, to let states, to respect the international law, uh, the sovereign state, to do what they do internally and mm -hmm. to resolve the conflict internally despite all the other challenges uh, they, they face. And second, exercise uh, the independence of uh, decision making. So for, for the region itself, despite the conflict that we have had, it is clear that Algeria is known uh, for its non-interference in, in the business of others. There were so many opportunities, uh, for example, that Algeria could do uh, what others expected to do. Uh, France, uh, the United States, uh, mm -hmm. for years uh, we, we were pushing Algeria to intervene in the Malian crisis. Mm -hmm. The same thing, a lot of people, uh, a lot of experts uh, blamed Algeria for not uh, uh, intervening in, 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 in the internal uh, uh, affairs or in, in the conflict in Libya. Uh, others p push uh, for the military to intervene and, and mm -hmm. the constitution came to, uh, to to take that seriously. So a lot of times those principles are, are, are what makes Algeria special in this mm -hmm. regard. And the neighbors uh, are uh, understood that, uh, uh, and 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 we see that in several areas, the Western Sahara, the, the mm -hmm. Palestinian issues, and things like that. Very nice. And uh, Mr. Badis Khnisa, uh, all fields are interconnected and it might seem a little irrelevant, let's say, uh, at first to speak about Algeria's strategic partners in this particular uh, chapter of diplomacy. But as we pave the way to the next chapter of Algeria's economy and the international, uh, uh, let's say, at the international level and foreign investment, how is Algeria joining the BRICS, Mr. Badis Khnisa, geopolitically strategic and important? We can recognize today that Algeria has achieved a big step in, in economical, uh, I would say, strategy and roadmap. Uh, this mm -hmm. is based also on a pragmatic plan also done and set up by people's, uh, uh, acknowledged people that uh, also knowing that uh, Algeria is trying today to build up and uh, revive, I would say, the economic, Algerian economic uh, uh, nearby the, the world and not excluded by uh, from the world. So this is a very important thing. And Algeria also uh, has given uh, some signs and uh, very clear signals by the past on the sovereignty, on also a new model of partnership, economic partnership based on win-win uh, principles. This is the brand new also in, in our model, in our approach that our partnership and uh, future or prospects of the future are uh, aware about that. So we need really to, uh, once again, to understand that the new Algeria is not just a concept, but actually is uh, palpable and, uh, and try to also use all the tools and mechanisms, uh, the feasible mechanism, pragmatic mechanism in order to achieve and succeed on that. So, of course, that Algeria got also at this, um, the same time some factors or key factors, I would say, even a key the performance indicators mm -hmm. in the positive level who uh, make Algeria, uh, I would say, stronger than before and also as a, a strategic partnership in terms of uh, energy, hydrocarbons, gas and so on uh, mm -hmm. through this crisis that we are facing today, but mm -hmm. also in other sectors like uh, economy, like agriculture, like uh, um, medical uh, mm -hmm. uh, industry and we so on. We will so delve uh, we into economy a little uh, further, uh, Mr. Badis Khnisa, and here let me bring uh, Mr. Maklow. Is the concept of a new world order that sees Algeria as a BRICS partner of concern to Europe? Well, the answer basically is, is, is yes, but this is probably due to short-sightedness. I'll explain better. There are many different economical blocks. If we look at Europe, if we look at South America, if we look at uh, examples in Asia and other examples in, in Africa, in, indeed. But in the scenario that we have today, which can only be defined as a new world order, mm -hmm. it is only correct that Algeria d takes its position, takes its place alongside nations that have similar scenarios and interests. Mm -hmm. So in a context of a world in which the rule book 
has been completely destroyed. We, we've lost it. Everything is changing. Mm -hmm. Algeria could actually represent a very, very valid and important member to what I'm going to call BRICS Plus, because we also mm -hmm. have uh, Turkey, for example, that aspires to be mm -hmm. part of, of BRICS. So, so let's call it BRICS Plus. Mm -hmm. But this is something that could work. We, we, we have um, a greater polarization, and that... Mm -hmm by definition, means that greater opportunities are mm. created. So yeah, nice. there are a number of means in which uh, Algeria could collaborate very, very strongly with uh, the other existing BRICS members and potential new BRICS. So anything that allows the economy to diversify, mm -hmm. to become stronger, that will bring greater domestic stability, and will assist in creating greater reasonable stability mm -hmm. is something that should be absolutely encouraged. Mm -hmm. That said, there are a number of observers and indeed politicians in, in Europe who see this in a different fashion. Mm -hmm. But the, the, you know, the, the, the bad news is very simple. Um, Europe has been very, very slow. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a moment in which, and I go back to the partnership concept, a concept that other guests raised and you indeed uh, raised yourself. It's a very, very important concept. We should not reason in terms of supply and demand, client mm -hmm. supplier. We have to reason in terms of partnerships. Algeria has enormous potential for, uh, for foreign investment, which is mm -hmm. absolutely necessary for a country that has, a, in terms of demographic, mm -hmm. demographics, you have a very high percentage of young people. Fortunately, mm -hmm. you also have a very high percentage of very well-educated mm -hmm. and dynamic young people. Mm -hmm. But there is a requirement to bring technology into Algeria. Algeria mm -hmm. is a country where energy prices are very, very low. Mm -hmm. So it's an ideal location, very close to Europe, for mm -hmm. energy-hungry European industries to consider moving to. Now, yes. with President Taboun's abolition of the 5149 law, mm -hmm. although that said, let's go back also to the, the concept that reforms are very important, but reforms take time. Reforms yes. take time. And it's only correct that they take time. Things mm -hmm. that are changes that are uh, the happenings from one day to the next generally mm -hmm. don't work. So the, the, the 5149 mm -hmm. abolition of this law has made Algeria much, much more interesting to, to direct foreign investors. Understood. Industry Mr. Makla, we will delve uh, a little deeper into the economic figures uh, in the next chapter, but now let me just stick to diplomacy uh, before we uh, shift. And here, uh, Mr. Ali Zoui, the non-aligned as a group require a review to have a, a say, let's say, in the face of changes in the world within the UN, in the economic sphere, or in relations with states. How is joining the BRICS, uh, Mr. Ali Zoui, going to help Algeria in this point of non-alignment as well? Thank you so much. As uh, Professor Mark pointed to, uh, Algeria wants from joining uh, Brexit not to create more polarization, but rather to create a multipolar uh, world. And this is a big difference. So mm -hmm. uh, some uh, European powers are wary of Algerian bid to join uh, BRICS, but I think Joining BRICS will uh, c uh, create more balance in the international relations mm -hmm. and will place Algeria in a better position uh, to, uh, to help its uh, development plan at the economic level and uh, to give it um, uh, tools to uh, uh, implement uh, some of uh, the pledges made by the President Taboud at the level of foreign policy, including supporting Algeria's traditional causes, uh, including the Palestine and the uh, Western Sahara. So I mm -hmm. think uh, joining such an economic alliance uh, will bring a lot of advantages to Algeria at the economic and political uh, and uh, policy uh, levels. Mm -hmm. And uh, the revival of the Algerian economy, the positive indicators recorded and the encouragement of local and foreign investment in many areas are some of the commitments made by the President of the Republic. Today, Algeria can enjoy its status as a pivotal country and a solid energy partner for all the countries of the Mediterranean Basin, while it's still in the process of laying the foundations of intelligent industrialization and modern agriculture, something conducive to joining the BRICS. Up next with Islam Sayyid.
Thank you, Kareem, and welcome, dear viewers. Over the course of three years, Algeria has marked positive figures in its economy, thanks to the wise governance of President Abdel Majid Taboon. In this show, we cherry pick the most remarkable of these achievements. First, the national economy began to recover after recession triggered by the COVID-19 pandemic. The value of exports outside of hydrocarbons rose by 87 percent, with expectations of $7 billion at the end of December. According to the IMF, Algeria has one of the fastest growth ratios in the region and the world with 4.7 percent of GDP growth at the end of the current year. The national currency exchange rate has also improved in recent months, which further boosted the economic performance. Second, due to the war in Ukraine and the grain crisis that hit many countries, Algeria has given great importance to the agricultural field to achieve food security, an increase of 31 percent production between 2021 and 2022. In technology sector, Mr. Abdel Majid Taboon provided a series of benefits to startup companies. More than a billion dinars have been invested in startups so far. The president has ordered to launch a platform for, ident for identifying innovative projects. Still with the technology sector, the president was keen, was keen to turn the, to the digital economy and to double digital products and transactions through comprehensive digitization in all sectors to improve the quality of public services for Algerian citizens. To another matter now, the government focused to promote investment in Algeria. 900 projects were unblocked this year. According to the National Investment Development Agency, 1,752 projects, where many of them are foreign investors, are expected to be registered. The government has disclosed a contract with the global automaker group Stellantis to, to make cars in Algeria, such as Fiat. According to the industry ministry, the first car manufactured in Algeria will be available at the end of 2023. In the energy sector and for 2022 hydrocarbons exports, $50 billion are expected on the basis of an average price above $100 per barrel, an increase of 45% compared to 2021. Algeria took the lead among Arab states in gas discovery this year amid the energy crisis that hit the world. Several agreements Algeria signed in this sector, including the one with Italy, which will be the platform for exporting Algerian gas to Europe. Another, import, another important achievement to Algeria following its request to join the BRICS that can provide it with more economic advantages, including expertise and investments flow. The request was hailed by Russia and China. Russia has very strong relations with Algeria. The latter is the third importer of Russian weapons in the world. As for China, it is Algeria's top trading partner. Both countries signed a strategic cooperation agreement extending to 2026, covering economy, energy, space, and cultural fields. Well, that's it for me, dear viewers. Back to you now, Kareem. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Shahib Batamin, the latest global crisis, mainly the energy crisis, created new opportunities for Algeria to become a stronger partner to Europe. How is Algeria going to benefit from its partnership with Europe, in particular in this field, and uh, with Italy uh, as well, to bring it into the light? Uh, seeing the changes uh, that were made and the reforms that were made within the budget uh, bill as uh, Mr. Marklow was uh, talking about it uh, earlier. Yeah, exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that Algeria was, uh, since decades, a good partner for our mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mediterranean, uh, uh, mainly Mediterranean uh, 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 countries. But I think there is a gap, actually. There is, uh, there is a market share in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, after uh, getting a war in, inside Europe, especially the war in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So uh, what happened now, in, what happened in, in Europe now, there is a very large gap and uh, Algeria want to take parts of this market share. Uh, let me remember that the United States became uh, the first provider of natural gas to Europe. Mm -hmm. Uh, LN, um, uh, Qatar uh, also is increasing by uh, 2027, like, will increase its um, LNG export to, to, uh, from 77 million tons mm -hmm. uh, actually to 126 million tons. Mm -hmm. Algeria also is willing, as the president declared, he's willing, we are willing to increase our export capacity of natural gas to 100 billion cubic meters per year. This is a right, this is a market mm -hmm. share, and we have to take, uh, take part of it. I think Algeria is not, taking, uh, is not taking profit of the crisis. Algeria is taking parts of what's available opportunities. There is an opportunity 
this is a business, so we have to take part of this. And uh, uh, after the crisis in Ukraine, it really was looming for, 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 for many months, Algeria responded quickly to, to, to European leaders' call uh, to increase its natural gas uh, supplies, and it did. Italy, by the, uh, the end of 2022, Algeria will provide uh, approximately 27 billion cubic meters mm -hmm. of natural gas, and this is a record. Yes. A few days ago, the CEO of Sonatrack, the nat national company, hydrocarbon uh, mm -hmm. company, declared that uh, today, Algeria is providing more than 97 uh, million cubic meters of natural gas per day. Mm -hmm. If we keep going with this cadency, we will reach like 35 billion cubic meters per year. Mm -hmm. This is a great achievement in a very short time. And this is a good partnership. This is a good cooperation. And mm -hmm. this is a sign how Algeria is responding uh, in a very good time to alleviate and to lighten the burden the Europeans, our, let's say, colleagues, our neighbors in mm -hmm. Europe are leaving today. Mm -hmm. As you know, uh, I think that uh, Europeans today were a little bit lucky because with the mild, milder temperatures, mm -hmm. so uh, uh, the temperature didn't go, didn't drop quickly as, uh, in, 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 uh, as expected. Mm -hmm. So they are more and more uh, in comfortable uh, situation. Mm -hmm. Even the storage of natural gas are exceeding 90%. So they are in very, mm -hmm. uh, let's say, uh, a good condition compared to what we were expecting in, 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 in summer. Uh, I think that Algeria has a lot of projects, as, mm -hmm. as I said before. There is a project maybe will be, will be take place in next month and years from, from Nigeria to Algeria to, to, uh, to extend, to increase the capacity of, of natural gas uh, export to, to Europe. Mm -hmm. Algeria is also a sonar track declared that it will invest $40 billion in the next five years. This is a uh, respond, this is an answer uh, mm -hmm. to make, is showing Algeria today it's a trusted partner and a reliable partner to its European uh, allies. Mm -hmm. I think this is, uh, this is uh, a good enga engagement mm -hmm. from, from Algeria to ensure and to make sure, ensure its partners that we are Excellent. willing to increase uh, to increase our supplies to Europe, and we are here to work for a win-win cooperation. Absolutely. And I think that the Algerian president is willing to, uh, to uh, visit Russia in the, in the upcoming uh, in the next, next month. Mm -hmm. I think that Algeria is keeping the same distance mm -hmm. with, with Italy, with, with, with Germany, with the United States, and even with China, with Russia. This is Algerian. This is a good thing in the Algerian policy yes. that we Preserving are. Preserve neutrality. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So we, we are keeping the same distance, and this is a good a sign of, of a good lead. Uh, this mm -hmm. is a, of a leadership. Very nice. So, uh, okay. Let me bring back uh, Mr. Mark Lowe. As I saw you nodding over there, agreeing on most of the statements that uh, Mr. Shaib Batamin was saying. So, Mr. Mark Lowe, just to get back, as a foreign observer and a geopolitical analyst, how do you read the strategic partnership between Algeria and Europe in general, and with Italy in particular, in light of the reforms and investment law introduced by President Tabun? You might have actually uh, shed some light uh, on that a uh, little earlier. And can Algeria represent a manufacturing alternative, let's say, to Eastern European and Asian countries, according to you? Well, f first and foremost, I was nodding my head, um, not in partial agreement, but mm -hmm. in absolutely complete agreement with mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Boutamin, who is always mm -hmm. very precise and, and, mm -hmm. and very, very clear. So um, mm -hmm. it, it, it's always, always very, very interesting to, to listen very carefully to his uh, observations and, and his analysis. Right. That, that said, um, we go back to the concept of partnering. Now, we have this interesting, it's not a new relationship because let us not forget that um, there are many very important Italian companies in Algeria. Mm -hmm. They've been in Algeria for a long time. Ansaldo, ENI, mm -hmm. Saipem, Technimont, to, to name just, just four countries that mm -hmm. are present. And very important uh, companies that represent Italy very, very well. And importantly, the, you know, the highest levels of management have excellent relationships with mm -hmm. high level management in Algeria. So they can also represent a form of catalyst to encourage even greater 
first and foremost Italian and, and mm -hmm. secondly European interest in taking Algeria into consideration as a manufacturing hub. But I insist upon repeating that any similar process must absolutely be built around a concept of, of partnership where mm -hmm. there are mutually beneficial, very tangible, mutually beneficial elements. Mm -hmm. Italy right just now um, is looking at Algeria as as a life raft, basically, something mm -hmm. or, or someone who is absolutely supplying a solution for an immediate problem. So mm -hmm. that, that's fine. But that's absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. But this should give us the impetus to start looking ever more carefully at what else can be done in Algeria. Mm -hmm. Now, at this point, And uh, what is Europe looking for in terms of investment? Yeah. Since you're talking about the possibilities that we can do, I mean, in Algeria with Italy, what is Europe looking for in terms of investment in general in Algeria? Well, the first and foremost, we have to take a look at those companies that consume a lot of energy, mm -hmm. okay? So, um, glass, for the sake of argument, okay? Mm -hmm. the, the, there's one example. So, any manufacturing process that depends very heavily on energy should mm -hmm. be looking very closely at uh, Algeria. It's not difficult to transfer the technology. Mm -hmm. Algeria has a very young, very well-educated um, base. Mm -hmm. Therefore, in terms of training people, in terms of creating professionalities, I don't mm -hmm. see any great problems there at all. Other areas of uh, particular importance are the pharmaceutical industry, agriculture, and going back to manufacturing, the automobile mm -hmm. industry um, would be, in my humble opinion, mm -hmm. an area in, in which um, there could perhaps be a greater focus. However, mm -hmm. all of that said, if I can just very quickly close a parenthesis mm -hmm. um, and, and to remain uh, as objective as is possible, mm -hmm. while on the one hand, um, I personally I, I'm very, very positive as regards this new chapter in Algeria's modern history. Mm -hmm. um, on, on the other hand, I do have to, to, to make some observations. Algeria is changing very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. It is being observed by practically mm -hmm. everybody. And certainly from a European perspective, some of the critical issues that uh, Algeria must absolutely focus on mm -hmm. and give proof of resolving are, well, for example, ease of doing business, operational risk, Mm -hmm. transparency, all issues that are already being, uh, being addressed. Mm -hmm. but we, we, we need to focus a lot more on making the business environment easier, faster, Clear. less bureaucratic. Above mm -hmm. all, less bureaucratic. So Clear. President Taboon's reform policies are absolutely excellent, but it's absolutely essential that public administration mm -hmm. joins in yes, and tag along. does everything possible to make things easier, mm -hmm. faster, and more economic. Very nice. And Dr. Badisa Khnisa, Algeria had reached a stage allowing it to choose its direction in complete freedom and without external dictates. Thanks in particular to its economic sovereignty by refusing to resort to indebtedness, despite the difficulties that is especially that we went through through COVID. How can you simplify further that this was a wise decision as external indebt uh, indebtedness paves the way for dictates in the political and economic spheres? was a little bit ahead in the previous topic. But anyway, mm -hmm. just uh, in my point of view, I think that uh, one of the pledges and the commitments of the president, uh, Abdel Majid Taboun, was to uh, roughly to make Algeria great again. So mm -hmm. the economy was uh, the key factor at, at that time. And today, more than before, due to some crisis, uh, uh, worldwide crisis and overseas crisis. So that's why Algeria could play this uh, key role and uh, a major role, I would say, in the economic equation here in the, in the region and also in the worldwide, because he is considered as or she is considered as a, a very strong partnership. But let me also uh, maybe make a heads up or uh, some highlight on one key factor, which is in this new uh, world order, which is the trust and trusting. Mm -hmm. Algeria is considered by several and various countries uh, as a trusted country, which is really playing as a potential key factor for the Algeria in order to be involved in the, as I said previously, in the decision maker mm -hmm. economical wise, but also in other decisions, strategic, geopolitical and so on. Mm -hmm. So 
of course, as I said previously, the sovereignty is one of the key signals that uh, President Abdel Majid Tabun gave. Mm -hmm. And also, we need also to remind everyone that they, 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 rather than waiting for the solution and mm -hmm. building up some, uh, some, I would say, forced slogan, we need also to involve all the people, Algerian people. That's why the, mm -hmm. the president count a lot on the, the citizens and civil society in order to play uh, her role in this uh, quite tricky equation and quite tricky mm -hmm. challenge. But, of course, I, I would say between bracket, in, impossible is not Algerian. Yes. So uh, we have a clear roadmap. We have a strong factors. We have a strong potential, mm -hmm. also natural potential, I would say. So let's move on and move forward reliably Excellent. and efficiently. Thank you, Dr. Bediz Khnisa. And uh, Dr. Hamoud Salhi, uh, before we wrap up, is the concept of a new world order that sees Algeria as a BRICS plus partner of concern to the United States? And what is the position in general of the USA and how interested is Washington in the development and the reforms as well as the strategies identified by Algiers? It is a concern for the United States, uh, particularly um, the move uh, of the Algerian leadership uh, uh, to uh, build a partnership or to join the BRICS. Mm -hmm. The BRICS is very, very significant. It's a bloc uh, that is uh, very strong. It has the highest uh, total number of the population, the highest uh, area of uh, exchange, uh, uh, economic exchanges. And more than, than anything else, the vision of the BRICS underscore uh, main ideas uh, that Algeria has in the 70s and continue to have, which is to establish an economic order, an international economic order that is fair and uh, that is not dependent on the superpower. So when Algerians take that step, what it meant for the United States is trying to shift itself away uh, from the orbit of the existing international order, economic order in particular. What we're talking about is specifically uh, in terms of a currency, as an example, the IMF or the dollar as one of the, uh, the, 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 uh, the currency of exchange in the new system and the BRICS, uh, they, are, they, they will be relying or they are relying or they created uh, a, a bank uh, that is uh, uh, rooted in the national currency of, of the countries represented, meaning that that's one way to, to uh, take away the dependent mechanism that the international order in, in, in imposes on, on, on countries that have needs of money. The conditions that the International Monetary Fund, for example, has on giving loans extends beyond uh, just giving back the money with interest, but it requires changes in the economic structure, changes undermining the role of the public center, sector, and particularly targeting the austerity, the, the measures, the austerity measures that include uh, uh, the, the basic needs of the population, including uh, stopping funding the education, uh, increase the prices of basic necessities like bread and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. These are changes that have led to what what is known as the uh, uh, the, the uh, demonstration of bread, as we've seen uh, in Argentina, we've seen in, in, in Tunisia in the 70s. So yes. it's a strong, strong dependent mechanism that Algeria, by taking, by looking, by taking an independent economic approach mm -hmm. and seeking for partnership that that, that emphasise its national uh, independence economically mm -hmm. is a threat to the United States. And the United States is very aware of that uh, because mm -hmm. it understands the role that Algeria has in, in the region. And it's also the potential uh, to, uh, to be a, a strong power and uh, could be a reliable partner. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Hamoud Salhi, and thank you for all the guests who accompanied me today. Uh, Dr. Shaib Boutamin, Dr. Mark Lowe, Dr. Uh, Ali Zoui, and uh, Dr. Badis Khanisa, thank you all for agreeing to be with us in this special show. The bottom line is three years have passed since the election of Abdel Majid Aboun as President of the Republic. And today's special was a top or a stop, let's say, for an evaluation of the implementation of on the ground of his famous slogan program, The New Algeria. President Aboun, aware of the great challenges of tomorrow, seems to have many surprises in store for the year 2023. With this, we conclude our program for today. Special thanks to all our distinguished guests who accompanied us in the program and special thanks for you, dear viewers, for keeping it here on All24 News. With this, we reach the end. Take care. Till next time.